chair, Ms. Ross, and I'm the dean of, well, I don't think it's on. No, it is on. That's good. So my name is Seamus Ross, and I'm dean of the Faculty of Information, which is on the north side of this building complex. This is the uh, Fisher, which is one of the best rare book libraries in North America. I love the space because, as I was just uh, discussing with David, it, it kind of soars up with like a Gothic cathedral. Um, it has a, even though it's a heavy stone, it has a certain lightness to it that uh, you know, gives you that kind of lofty thoughts. Uh, I find it uh, an astonishing place to be. It has an amazing collection of works, and I told P.J. Carefoot once that I was very interested in Fox's Book of Martyrs which is a 16th century book that uh, looked at, that recorded the history of those individuals that uh, gave their lives for the English church and so forth. It's an important book because in the, in the early 19th century, it became a quintessential book for the British to justify their empire. And one of the remarkable things was I said, to PJ, oh, I, I really love that book. And I'm fascinated by the notion of annotation. It's something I was talking to Bob Stein about his tools for annotating earlier today. And PJ Carefoot pulled out five or six printings of Fox's Book of Mars at different periods, including a couple of different editions of the, of the same uh, printing. Uh, and it was just phenomenal, the depth and breadth of the collection. There are very few copies, for example, of Fox's Book of Martyrs that, that would survive anywhere, despite the fact that there was one in each of the 3,000 churches in the 16th century in the UK. I think there's some 300 surviving volumes anywhere in the world, five or six of them here. And that's just an example, uh, in a small way, of the rich breadth of the, the collection. Those of you who were here yesterday heard that uh, the library has acquired the McLuhan um, well, I'm not here to, to talk any longer about that. I'm here actually to introduce um, Claire Lamont, who's the uh, attaché, uh, cultural attaché at the Consul General of France here in, in Toronto. And actually, in a way, to make sure that I thank Claire and I thank the French Embassy for all that they've done for both my faculty and for the university to bring phenomenal speakers here to Canada. And I do regret that I can't thank her in French, and having lived in Europe for many years, that's an absolute disgrace. Um, but I'm sure that all the audience uh, can make up for that with their breadth of French knowledge. Um, but anyway, we as a faculty have benefited tremendously, both our students and our faculty, from the tremendous support that the French Embassy and has given to us in terms of bringing real luminaries from France to talk to our faculty. The big, they were a very big supporter of uh, the McLuhan 100 uh, conference that we had uh, a couple of years ago, and once again tonight they have continued to support us with being a great, great speaker. Claire, please. Je vais juste vous rappeler quelques éléments sur la vie de 
Dominique Bolton, d'abord c'est un diplômé de l'Institut d'études politiques euh, qui, est, euh, qui a un doctorat en sociologie. Il est fondateur et euh, euh, directeur de l'Institut pour les sciences de la communication au CNRS. So, uh, Dominique Bolton, a graduate from the Institut d'études politiques, uh, holds a PhD in sociology, is the founder and until recently was director of the Institute for Communication Sciences at the CNRS, the French National Center for Scientific Research and one of the most prestigious research institutions in the world. He is also the founder and current director of the journal Hermès, a periodical studying communications in an interdisciplinary manner uh, in relation to individuals, techniques, cultures, and societies. C'est donc le fondateur et le directeur du, de la revue Hermès, vos amis en anglais, journal, uh, et uh, un, un, une revue qui étudie le, les, les communications uh, dans le sens le plus large et de façon interdisciplinaire. He has worked and published extensively on topics, on topics such as media and communication, the internet, uh, public space and political communications, globalization, and uh, I just wanted to mention to uh, give you a sense of the um, scope of his work that in recognition of his contribution to research in France, the French government has appointed him uh, officier in the National Order of the Legion de Uh Le professeur Bolton a donc travaillé et publié euh, de façon très importante sur euh, des sujets très différents comme les médias, la communication, euh, Internet, le journalisme, la mondialisation et, euh, et euh, en reconnaissance de tous ses travaux, a été euh, reconnu officier dans l'Ordre national de la Légion d'honneur. With that, I will stop and just donner un petit peu de temps pour vous parler. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask Chris to give us a little bit of a history about this building because then I will introduce Dominique, uh, but I thought that Dominique should know where he is giving a talk tonight because I think it is, uh, I'm sure it's going to have an influence on his speech. So coincidentally, uh, we're also celebrating the 40th anniversary of our existence. Uh, this building was built 40 years ago. I won't get too much into the architecture because I think I can't speak too much on that. But um, for collections of interest, we do have a strong uh, French Revolution collection here. Uh, we also have a uh, strong Rousseau and Voltaire collection, uh, which ironically are both next to each other um, on the second floor. And for those of you that know how the relationship ended, it ended with, uh, I think it was Voltaire saying to Rousseau, I hate you. Um, and we also have a very strong uh, Fully modern science collection of French material, and most of most of these collections have been completely digitized and printed. Um, so yeah. What is your rare book? How many how many volumes? Uh, we have seven hundred thousand um, volumes cataloged here. Probably have just as many have been cataloged. Um, so yeah. It's impressive. For some of you who have seen me over the past two days, starting at 5 o'clock yesterday, when we launched the 50th anniversary of the celebration of the opening of the center, quickly the reason why Dominique is here and he's the second speaker for a lecture, which is a student-led initiative, which is about a lecture series which will happen all year under the banner of the Culture and Technology Concentration and the Coach House Institute, which is uh, hosted at the Faculty of Information. So the students have, I would say, selected a number of speakers, and uh, I have to admit that I maybe imposed Dominique Bolton on their choices, because they may not have thought about bringing someone uh, from another country where the language spoken would be different than English, so I guess I dared doing it for the 50th anniversary. And the reason being that um, I find that when you will listen to Dominique Volton, and I will go later on the specifics of the way the lecture will be delivered today with the translator, I think that uh, the project behind this question and the question of lecture and technology in terms of its relationship with terms such as information, we will, maybe you will realize when you hear him speaking that 
when the person is trained and raised in a country which is different than where you are actually studying and the language which is being used to disseminate the results of research has actually an impact on the way the person feels, which is what we call worldviews. Um, for myself, I was trained actually to learn about English. I knew all about English civilization, English poetry, English literature. By coming to Canada, I had to completely switch and actually try to teach about French literature, French poetry, French linguistics. So a complete twist about the way I was trained. And I think that that twist made me realize that actually you don't see the world the same way even when you're doing research. So even if the title of this communication tonight is called Information is not communication, I can tell you that if he was to give it with the title Informer n'est pas communiqué, there would be some actually differences. And I have picked up Dominique at four o'clock on Tuesday and he is very jet lag. He gave a lecture today at three PM in another university. And I am amazed at how much he's, he has actually already understood about what Toronto is and Anglo-Canada is. It's his first trip to Anglo-Canada. He has always been to French Canada. And he suddenly realized when we had a talk at 10 o'clock Tuesday night, which was like four in the morning for him in France, he said, why is Canada so modest? Why is Toronto not known in France about what's happening here and the project behind him coming here is actually using his um, journal as Claire described it, Hermes, to actually try to disseminate what scientific thought, particularly in Canada and of course with uh, networks in the US, but he thought that actually that attitude of the Canadian of standing on the fence and not really always like choosing what side is actually something that is the reason why Canada, compared to other countries in the world where there is different languages and different cultures, have been completely disseminated and fragmented. So the question that he left with us at four in the morning for him on Tuesday night is like, why is Canada still existing 400 years after, when this country should have actually been completely fragmented? So I'm sure he's reflecting on this since Tuesday, I don't know if this would have a link with what he's going to talk tonight, but to have brought him here, he realized about something that he actually had never thought about. He's been in Australia, but he said there's something about Canada, and Canada doesn't know how to sell itself. And Toronto doesn't know how to sell itself. And he said maybe by going through science and showing how science is being disseminated, which is the tools that he has, being the director of Airbus, could be maybe the way of giving a voice to Canada, but particularly to Toronto, because he knows French Canada, but he discovered that what is very specific about information is actually integrating the diversity in its theoretical model, and he doesn't, I don't know if he's going to actually propose something tonight, but he says that you in Toronto are the place where you could actually think about that, because you live it on an everyday basis. So I'm going to give the mic to Dominique. But before I do that, I'd like to explain that Dominique as well is an activist. So what he has decided to impose on you tonight is not a simultaneous translation. I negotiated very hard with him, but he wouldn't let it go. He says, I want a consecutive translation, because even if we are in Anglophone Canada, I want the people to hear both voices which means that it's going to be a translation where Beatrice sitting here is going to be going back and forth with his thoughts. So he's going to speak, she's going to translate and back and forth. That's why you don't have anything in your ears because he wants you to hear the French first and the English after. So that's Dominique with his activism. So I just wanted to warn you, you don't, it's not going to be a simultaneous translation. And then he'll be in conversation with Guy Pro, who is a um, psychologist who used to be um, associated and did a director at Baycrest, uh, and who has read Dominique Volto a lot, and who is Franco-Ontarian, so he's going to talk about actually the bilingual mind and its relationship with people in Quebec, and how uh, a project with uh, Hermès, uh, what it means for him. 
Hervé Sanvi is a PhD student at the high school. He speaks French. He is actually doing his PhD in an anglophone Canada. And I'm sure coming from McGill, again, he had to switch and do what I did. And uh, it's actually very interesting when you are studying um, in a different environment. And Andrew Wesley, who is the uh, director of the Institute of <coughs> Communication. I know there's a long time. culture, and, and, and information. And information technology. It's so long <laughs> that I'll let you talk about it. I was invited to actually react to what you're going to be uh, saying, Dominique, and I know already what actually he likes about what you wrote, so I have already an insight on what he's going to be uh, wrestling with you. But just for the reason to tell you for the people who are in this room, Dominique Bolton did write a book which is called Macluan ne répond plus, which means Macluan is not answering anymore. And maybe you will tell us what this title is. It's all about. Thank you. So in Europe we have 26 languages, 28 countries, and so we're used to having interpretation. Je suis content d'être là parce que plus il y a de modernité technique, plus on a besoin de la tradition. I'm happy to be here because more, the more technology we have, the more tradition we need. This is a wonderful place to be in. Tout à l'heure, je finirai sur les cinq raisons pour lesquelles je pense que Marshall McLuhan est important. Je pense qu'une des raisons pour lesquelles il est important, c'est que il était fou de technologie, mais il était tout, il était fou tout court. C'est mieux. So, I'm going to give you five reasons in a few moments about why McLuhan was. Uh, so important. Um, he was crazy about technology, but, and he was crazy himself. Un poet. Un poet. He was a poet. Et un homme Very cultured. En gros, l'idée, plus il y a de modernité technique, plus il faut naturellement euh, garder les racines culturelles, anthropologiques. C'est fondamental. Sinon, on tombe dans l'idéologie technique. So. The, as I was saying, the more uh, technology we have, the more we need cultural roots. Otherwise, we fall back into this ideology of technology. Et ça fait 40 ans que je fais des recherches sur la communication, et 20 ans que je ne suis pas fasciné par Internet, donc je suis traité de vieux, réactionnaire, technophobe, adversaire du progrès, et c'est pas grave. So I've been working in the communications field for 40 years, and for 20 years I haven't been too keen about internet, so that's why I'm, I'm uh, sort of uh, recognized as being old-fashioned, old reactionary, phobic, and uh, anti-computers, anti etc. Almost a Luddite. Et pour une raison très simple, c'est que euh, la mondialisation des systèmes d'information n'augmente pas la capacité de communication entre les peuples et les individus. So there's a very simple reason for it. The more globalization we we have, um, it doesn't increase communication between peoples and individuals. Du téléphone à la radio, à la télévision, à l'ordinateur, nous avons une capacité extraordinaire de production d'informations. So we can produce information thanks to uh, radio, television, um, computers. Mais il n'y a pas d'augmentation de la communication humaine. But there's not any more human communication than there was before. Nous envoyons de plus en plus rapidement des informations interactives, and so on. So we have more and more interactive communications, but or, or information, but so what? Les systèmes d'information, les systèmes d'information vont très vite. La tolérance et la compréhension interculturelle vont très très lentement. So information is very quick, and it's, it, it is going back and forth. 
but uh, tolerance and understanding is much, much slower. Quand je vous dis, ce n'est pas la communication technique qui me fascine, c'est la communication humaine, sociale et culturelle. So, in other words, what, what interests me is, is in communication um, of, a, of a human nature and not um, communication, technological communication. Il y aura des techniques encore plus performantes qu'Internet demain. Et ça ne changera rien à la question centrale. Pourquoi les hommes adorent se détester, se dominer, se battre et se tuer So there will be more technology in the future, um, much more advanced than computers, but it won't answer the question of why do uh, men hate each other, or mankind hates each other and kills each other, etc. C'est pour cela que pour moi, la communication est d'abord un problème politique et humain avant d'être un problème technique. So for me, communications is a political and, and hu human problem more than a technological one. Ça, c'est le premier point que je voulais dire. That's Et le deuxième, il y, a, il y a 60 points. 60 points, that was my first one. <laughs> le deuxième, c'est que euh, nous, nous détestons la communication comme concept et comme mot, parce que justement la communication humaine réussit très difficilement. So we, we, my second point is that we hate communications because human communication is so difficult to achieve. Mais nous adorons les techniques parce qu'elles sont efficaces. And we love technology because it's very efficient. Et nous supposons que, et là c'est faux, mais nous, nous supposons que plus il y aura des techniques, plus on se comprendra. So our false um, hypothesis is the more technology there will be, the more we will understand one another. Et c'est ça l'erreur de l'idéologie technique. And that's the error of the techno technology ideology. De croire que plus il y aurait de tuyaux, plus les hommes se comprendraient. To believe that the more systems we use, the more people will understand each other. Et ce divorce est croissant puisqu'il y a de plus en plus de techniques performantes avec de plus en plus d'incommunication dans un monde ouvert où tout le monde voit tout. And this, this cleavage or divorce is even more obvious because the technologies are more and more advanced and there's more and more incommunication in, in an open world where everybody sees everything. La question théorique qui m'intéresse, elle est simple, c'est la suivante. Qu'est-ce que ça change, puisque c'est la première fois dans l'histoire de l'humanité, qu'est-ce que ça change que tout le monde sache tout et tout le monde voit tout et que le résultat c'est d'apercevoir que tout le monde est fondamentalement différent. So my question is very simple. Is um, I, I, I ask um, why is it that um, but this is the first time in, in, in our history in our history that we see this change where everybody uh, sees everything, everybody uh, knows everything, and, but um, that we realize that there's more and more differences in this world. Et des différences de plus en plus incompatibles. Il suffit de voir les conflits culturels, linguistiques, religieux, symboliques, etc., etc. And, and these differences are, are more and more magnified, be they cultural, um, uh, historical, et, et political, etc. L'histoire de l'humanité ne commence pas avec Internet. So humanity did not start with Internet. Ni la communication. Nor did uh, communication. Aujourd'hui, on est 5 milliards et demi d'individus. Il y a 5 milliards et demi de téléphones portables, 5 milliards et demi de radio, 4 milliards et demi de télévision, 3 milliards d'ordinateurs, and so on. So nowadays, we are 7.5 billion inhabitants of this earth. We have 5.5 billion cell phones, 4.5 billion telef um, uh, radios, 4 and 4.5 billion uh, TV? TVs and uh, 3 million internet or uh, 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 computers. computers and so yeah, and so this. what? <laughs> and so what? La guerre, le racisme, la haine sont en parfaite expansion. So war, racism and hate is in full expansion. C'est pour ça que je dis la question n'est pas d'être pour ou contre la technologie, la question elle est ailleurs. 
So it's not a matter of being for or against technology, it's, it's just another issue, totally. The troisième point, c'est quoi le ailleurs? Eh bien, le ailleurs, c'est que le récepteur de la communication, il révèle l'importance de l'altérité. So, the, uh, my third point is, uh, the other aspect is the receiving end, the, the receiver of the information or the communication, and this is what, what I would call altérité or the otherness. Otherness. You said otherness. The otherness. That's not a good translation, but it has a sense. Otherness. I don't know how to translate it. C'est ça qui m'obsède, c'est que le récepteur n'est jamais en ligne avec l'émetteur et le message. So this is what I'm obsessed about, that the receiver is never online with the person sending and the message. Et plus il y a de techniques, plus il y a de messages, plus le divorce grandit entre l'information et la communication. So the more technology there is, the more information and the more, the wider the gap or the divorce um, between uh, information and communication. C'est pour ça que informer n'est pas communiqué, c'est-à-dire l'information, le message est toujours plus simple que la communication, c'est-à-dire la, la relation. So that's why I say that information is not a communication and it's much simpler to uh, receive the information than to try and communicate. Et c'est aussi pourquoi comme notre expérience humaine de la communication est toujours décevante, un, nous adorons la communication technique, Deux, nous adorons les messages et l'information. Et trois, on déteste le concept de communication. So we, we don't like um, this concept of communication because it's a very difficult thing to carry out. And that's why we love all this technology and these message, messaging, etc. Because it's much easier to, to handle. Il faut renverser la problématique. Le plus compliqué, c'est évidemment la communication. Le concept le plus important, c'est le concept de communication, pas le concept d'information. So of course uh, we have to look at it in the opposite way in that the concept of communication is what is the most important, much more important than the concept of information. Parce que dans le mot communication, il y a la présence de l'altérité. So in communication, in that word, you have this otherness, the presence of the otherness of the communicator. Quatrième idée, il n'y en a que dix. Hein. Donc ça va assez vite. There's only ten ideas, not six. Donc pouvoir dormir vite. <laughs> Number four. Quatrième idée, euh, le mot communication, du point de vue de l'étymologie, a deux sens. Le premier sens classique, qui vient du latin, c'est partager. Communiquer, c'est la question de l'amour que nous recherchons tous dans notre vie. So there's two meanings to communication. Um, the, uh, or one of the or meanings being uh, sharing or, or the concept of love. That's the traditional meaning. Le deuxième sens à partir de l'imprimé, c'est transmettre. And then the second meaning is to transmit. Et aujourd'hui, transmettre et interactivité. And today that includes interactivity. Mais l'interactivité n'est pas synonyme de communication. But interactivity is not the same thing as communication. On fait de l'interactivité par les signes pour l'information. La communication, c'est quand on arrête les so, machines et que les hommes se parlent, ce qui est beaucoup plus lent. So interactivity is, is, the, is the action, communication is the final, the end product, and um, the, the much more important and difficult thing to accomplish. C'est pour ça que moi j'introduis un troisième sens du mot communication. Communiquer, c'est négocier. So I have a third meaning for communication, which is to negotiate. Ce que nous faisons tous dans notre vie privée, avec nos femmes, nos maîtresses, nos amants, nos enfants, so we all do this in our private lives, be it with our husbands, wives, mistresses, children. 90% de votre vie privée est un temps de négociation. So 95% uh, of your private life is spent in negotiating. Quand ça marche. When, when you're successful. Et quand ça marche, ce qui est rare, ça fait de la cohabitation. So when, when you're successful, which is not always the case, then that's called cohabitation. Et c'est la même chose pour une entreprise, c'est la même chose pour un pays, c'est la même chose pour une région, c'est la même chose pour l'Europe, c'est la même chose pour la mondialisation. So, this applies to companies, to, to Europe, to globalization, to communities. La cinquième idée, c'est que face à la complexité croissance de la communication, nous préférons évidemment de plus en plus les techniques, les techniques. 
So my fifth point is that uh, because of the growing complexity of communication, uh, we are very mesmerized by the fact that technology is much easier. Et il y a un conflit croissant entre la vitesse et la performance des systèmes techniques par rapport à la lenteur et à la modestie de la communication interculturelle. And there's a growing conflict between the, the, the fast uh, different methods of technology in relation to, uh, and a wider and wider gap in relation to the slow, slowness of the uh, process of communication. Et le paradoxe dans lequel nous sommes dans ce début du XXIe siècle, c'est que la technique, qui a été un immense facteur de progrès et d'émancipation pendant quatre siècles, peut devenir, notamment dans le domaine de la communication, un extraordinaire accélérateur de haine et d'incompréhension. So the paradox is that technology, which has, had, uh, has resulted in 400 years of amazing progress and emancipation, uh, right now is, is a, a factor that accelerates hate and lack of understanding. En fait, il y a deux philosophies de la communication. Une philosophie dominante aujourd'hui dans le monde qui privilégie la technique et l'économie, largement dominante. So there's two uh, types of uh, philosophies of communications. The first one, which is uh, held by large majority of people, which uh, gives most importance to technology and the economy. Et la deuxième philosophie, minoritaire, à laquelle j'appartiens, met en avant au contraire la dimension politique et humaine de la communication avant la technique. And the second um, school of philosophy is of, of a minority group of which, to which I belong, where we put the accent more on the political and the um, individual. Sixième idée, qu'apporte la question de la mondialisation par rapport à, à cette théorie de la communication La communication, c'est trois choses. So what does globalization have to do with communication Une ouverture, qui est un progrès, circulation. So the first thing would be openness, uh, which is progress and circulation, movement. Deuxième processus, un extraordinaire phénomène de rationalisation. And rationalization, which is something quite extraordinary. Et le troisième, complètement inattendu, dans la mondialisation contemporaine, c'est-à-dire celle qui au rond commence dans les années 1980, le troisième processus complètement inattendu, c'est le surgissement des identités culturelles. And the third aspect, which is totally unexpected and has occurred since 1980, is the, the uh, arrival of, of different... Um, um, des identités culturelles. Uh, cultural identities, the, the, the presence of new cultural identities. Les conflits religieux que l'on observe aujourd'hui au niveau mondial sont l'avant-garde de tous les autres conflits culturels sur les langues, sur les symboles, sur les frontières, sur les mémoires, sur les patrimoines, sur les représentations. So the religious conflicts that we see nowadays are at the forefront of all kinds of possible other conflicts that could occur, be it to do with the heritage, with, with uh, all kinds of different aspects of society. Et même si les pays riches contestent l'identité culturelle des pays pauvres, eux-mêmes les pays riches, y compris Canada, États-Unis, Europe, etc., revendiquent de plus en plus violemment la question du respect de l'identité culturelle. So rich countries um, uh, want to have their cultural identity uh, recognized and they are seeing this happening with other uh, cultural identities elsewhere. Il y a un couple qui se forme entre identité et technique de communication parce que les techniques de communication répercutent au niveau mondial cette revendication du respect de l'identité culturelle donc du respect de la diversité culturelle. So this um this, these uh, communication technologies um, are there and to um, communicate these um, these various uh, identi identity or cultural identities and uh, are playing a larger and larger role. Donc septième idée, septième idée, la question de la diversité culturelle devient la nouvelle